Chapter 7 How to Prospect Brilliant Talent As I hurried out of my house, I stopped to pull out my cell phone and punched in my mother's number. Unfortunately, I got her voicemail. So I left the following message. Hello, Mrs. Gage. I just want you to know that your son is on his way to have lunch with the President of the United States. Love you. Bye. My mom raised three kids by herself, knocking on doors, selling Avon products. And this was back in the day. Not like today where somebody takes a catalog into their office and asks their co-workers if they want to order anything or they post catchy memes on Instagram. My mom went house by house, apartment by apartment, literally knocking on doors to support her three kids, which she was raising by herself. I wish I could tell you that I appreciated my mother's effort at the time and really understood the sacrifices she made to take care of us, but that would be a lie. Finding my purpose and how I wanted to live my life was a torturous process for both her and me. I was a teenage alcoholic and drug addict, which led to a lot of poor choices. Things came to a head when I celebrated my 16th birthday in jail, awaiting trial for armed robbery. I was fortunate to have people who cared for me and reached out to help, allowing me to alter the trajectory of my life. So in 2012, when I left her that message, it was for one simple reason— I wanted her to be proud of who she was and what she had done for me. Anytime I face a difficult decision these days, I stop to take a breath and ask myself, will what I'm doing make my mother proud? So why am I telling you all this? Because that is the best advice I can give you about building a business. Build one you'll be proud of. Build one the people who raised you will be proud of. So let's talk about practicing good ethics. I mentioned earlier how we need to get away from all the hype, manipulation, and questionable practices. Please understand that while some of those business tactics are effective short-term, they won't take you to where you ultimately want to go. I bet a lot of people would be surprised to learn that the moral and ethical approach is actually the most effective one from the standpoint of marketing and building a strong business. So before we get into the micro of how to prospect, let's look at the macro of the ethics involved. Yes, we're all competing with each other. You're competing against many other companies that want the same candidates you have. You're even competing with other team members in your own company. You could even find yourself in a situation where you, your sponsor, and one of your personal enrollees are all competing for the same candidate. But before you fall into a siege mentality, A little perspective helps. At this moment, I'm speaking to you. At the moment, I'm recording this. There are 7.7 billion people on the planet. And according to the estimates of the United Nations, there will be a net gain of 14 more during the time it takes you to listen to this chapter. Okay? So, 7.7 billion. We're going to add 14 more before we get to the next chapter. The overwhelming majority of them are not in the business. You don't need all of these people in your team to own a profitable business. You don't need half of them, a third of them, a fourth of them, or even one half of 1%. Personally, I'd be happy if I just had 2 million of them on my team. So, 
Fighting over the pie, chasing the people who are already in the business, is pretty foolish. Wouldn't it be really clever if we all focused on baking a bigger pie? So, let's all agree to compete with integrity with other companies in a spirit that serves the profession as a whole. We can do this with fair market differentiation, not by disparaging other companies. Instead of talking about what you think is bad about everyone else, speak about what you think is great about your company. When talking with a candidate, answer questions directly and without deception, using a third-party tool if you're smart. If you don't have an answer, don't make one up. Promise to find out the answer and get back with them. Honor the governing laws in your jurisdiction regarding product and income claims. There's no need to exaggerate income examples. As my friend Dana Collins always says, the truth is good enough. Please don't resort to job shaming, education shaming, or manipulation. Don't distort or attack. It really isn't necessary to close, hype, or hard sell people. Genuine long-term success is all about solving problems and adding value. If you change your focus from what you want to sell and instead focus on how you can solve problems or add value for your candidates, you'll achieve much greater success. And one more thing. Let's get all that silliness about fear of rejection out of the way once and for all. Most people aren't thinking about you and your business. Not even a fleeting thought. Even the people who know you and love you. They're thinking about the issues they're facing in their own life, the bills they need to pay, what's coming out this week on Netflix, their next dentist appointment. So when you call them and invite them to watch a video, come to a meeting, view a webcast or whatever, they'll consider what you ask. They'll say yes or they'll say no. Then they will hang up and three seconds later reach for the TV remote or be watching a video of some cat riding a Roomba vacuum cleaner. So why don't you just get on with it and extend your invitation? Would you like to know who are the best, most qualified candidates for your business? The answer is easy. It's the ones who enroll and get to work. (laughs) So how do you discover the people who enroll and get to work? That's even easier. They are the people left after the others say no. Now, let's talk about how you develop the mindset of an elite level recruiter. You might need to reprogram your mindset if you want to really become an elite level recruiter. Stop pondering questions like, who can I sell this stuff to? How can I manipulate people into doing this? Who can I get to sell this stuff? None of those questions serve you. Start reflecting on questions like these. Who really needs these products? Who can I help with this business? How can these products or this business opportunity add value to the people in my world? If you're going to be successful in this business, you better own it and have some swag. You better know the true value of what you have to offer. Then I want you to pose the real question. The question you should be asking each and every day of your business is, how can I best recruit the kind of brilliant talent I'm looking for on my team? Once you have that mindset, 
you're ready to do something extraordinary. And I'm not really good at uh, voice impressions, but picture, <laughs> picture a Yoda voice. Only then, to proceed with your training, are you ready. <laughs> For you to become an expert at prospecting, you're going to need to become proficient at a few basic skill sets. The first of these is the skill of meeting new people. Why is this important? Because you don't already know everyone who's going to help you create success in the business. In fact, no one who joins our business already knows all the people they need. Everyone comes into the business with their current list, the people they know. And how you do with that list depends on how your relationship with those people have been up to then. Some people could start off with a list of 25 people and enroll 18 of them. Others start with a list of 200 and not even get in eight. Why? It's often not their invitation skills. It's how they interacted with that list before they ever joined the business. That's the good news and the bad news. When I started in direct selling and began working my list, my results were terrible. Why? Because I wasn't very well liked. My interactions with many people I knew weren't pleasant for them, and the last thing they wanted was to have to spend more time with me. I had no credibility, likability, or trust built up in the bank account of most of these people. When I came back into the business after a break, my list worked very well for me. Why? Because I had grown a great deal as a person. At that point, my relationships with people were built on mutual respect and adding value. Yet even though I had good relationships the second time around, I still needed to meet new people. And so do you. I've earned millions of dollars in commissions. And way more than half of that is from volume produced by people I didn't know when I began. And if you poll 10 elite leaders, 9 or maybe even all 10 will tell you the same thing. The quality of your relationships with people in the past will intensely impact how well your invitations work with them in the present when you begin. For some of you, like me, you'll need the personal growth that comes from the business to do well from your first list. You may actually do better with new people you meet because you can just start fresh with those people. This is an area where we find the delta between the amateurs versus the professionals, the successful people versus those who quit without ever making it. The amateur makes excuses around the type or number of people they know. Let's look at meeting new people. The professional who creates success understands that meeting people is a skill, a skill that can be learned. Some of you listening to this are a people person and a natural extrovert. You can skip the next few paragraphs. Others are introverts and shy about meeting new people. As someone who entered the business as an introvert with social anxiety, and still sometimes deals with those anxiety issues today, I would like you to know there are some great ways to meet new people in a very non-threatening way. The most important dynamic I find is a shared experience or commonality. If you're walking down the street wearing a New York Yankees jersey and someone else is walking toward you, also in a Yankees jersey, they're probably going to greet you pleasantly. 
If you're walking your mutt at 7 a.m. and someone else is out with their pooch, you'll probably strike up a conversation effortlessly. And you could bet the keys to everything you own that if you're pregnant or pushing a baby in a stroller and encounter someone in the same situation, within three seconds you'll be chatting with them like you've known each other for 30 years. That's because you have a shared experience which creates an immediate bond. The same thing happens when you're standing in line to see the latest Marvel superhero flick or you get out of your blue Camry as someone else pulls up next to you in another blue Camry. One day, I had the bright idea to join a softball league. So, I responded to an ad and got picked up by a team. On my way driving to the field for the first time... I started having an anxiety attack because it dawned on me that I wouldn't know a soul there. But my desire to start playing softball was greater than my fear of meeting strangers at the moment, so I kept going. I've since earned literally millions of dollars in commissions from business lines I developed from people I met in that softball league. Think about places and activities you would enjoy so much, your joyous anticipation will be greater than your fear. I can't emphasize this enough. I want to repeat it. Um, Think about things you love to do so much that the joy of participating in that would just negate completely any fear you might have about meeting new people. And then you totally kill the stress. Some great places to meet excellent candidates are classes at spiritual centers and continuing education, language clubs, sports leagues, public seminars, and online groups and forums. My secret weapon location to meet great candidates is at hand car washes. The people using that service have nice cars, which means they're probably ambitious, successful people. They're willing to pay more for a hand wash so their car doesn't get all scratched up. That means they're intelligent and willing to invest in what's important to them. They usually are car people, and as they're standing around waiting for their car to be finished, they're chatting with the other people about their cars. Some important points to remember. In the beginning, you will get paid for who you were before you joined the business. The great candidates aren't in your home. The people who live there are already in, or they aren't good candidates. It's called relationship marketing. But as my friend Wes Linden likes to say, the relationship comes before the marketing. Don't wait to get through your first list. Meeting people should be a continuous process. And lastly, you can always change the equation by going out and meeting some new people today. Three key takeaways for you. And this, again, if you got your journal or notepad, you're putting some, some thoughts in. Take, take down these three key takeaways. Number one, meeting people is a skill. Number two, it's a skill you can develop. Number three, success follows when you meet people and let the relationships develop naturally. Don't try to make a presentation while you're waiting in line for the new Mission Impossible flick or hawk a distributor kit in your yoga class. Meet people and start relationships. Then add them to your candidate list, which leads us to the second skill set you need to develop. Working a candidate list. We're not talking about making a candidate list. I assume you already did that. I'm talking about working one. Candidate lists should be organic. 
a living, breathing entity. It isn't something that you write once, then put away in a drawer. That's what amateurs do. A professional updates their list every week. That's because every week you probably meet somewhere between 7 and 15 people. The new clerk at your dry cleaners, somebody new hired at work, the neighbor down the street, and people at social events like a dinner party or a baby shower. In the course of your internet surfing, you're probably meeting even more. Most people just go through their regular routine and don't give any of this a thought because it doesn't happen at the exact time they're working their business. But if you're approaching your business in a professional way, you're always mindful of everyone you meet and adding them to your candidate list. As people join your business, you take them off your list. And if someone goes through a presentation and declines the opportunity, you either remove them altogether or shift them to another list to check back with in the future if something should change in their life. To be a master recruiter, you need to be able to play your candidate list the way a virtuoso plays the violin. Extending an invitation. The third basic skill set that factors strongly in your recruiting results is your invitation skills. If we wanted to assign value to your skill sets, your skill at inviting would easily be the most lucrative one. The better you are at this, the more successful you will become. Because inviting is the nexus of everything we do. You invite people to one-on-ones, home get-togethers, hotel meetings, and online presentations. So let's go into depth on how to make compelling invitations. Then, in the following chapter, we'll discuss how to handle the actual presentations you're inviting people to. You know that, as part of your major blast, you're going to be inviting people to two or three in-home launch meetings. Then you want to do an electronic campaign through email, text, and messaging apps. So let's start with how you can get the most people to attend your launch presentations. Inviting is all about your posture and connection. Weak posture equals low acceptance. Obnoxious posture produces a lower response than a weak one. You need a strong but friendly posture. Your candidate has to experience a direct correlation between what matters to them right now and what you are inviting them to do. Let me say that again. Your candidate has to experience a direct correlation between what matters to them right now and what you are inviting them to do. The three traits for successful inviting are passion, intensity, and urgency. These traits are required because of a simple but profound truth. Candidates don't know what they don't know. And frequently, they don't know what's in their own best interest. So sometimes you're going to have to exercise a little tough love with them. For an invitation to be compelling, there has to be an element of intrigue. So you can't reveal everything, no matter how persistent the candidate is. When you have a candidate who absolutely won't back down and demands that you make the entire presentation in your invitation call, shut it down and move on to someone else. Believe me, you're wasting your time. All right. What I'm going to share with you next are the 10 keys to successful inviting. Just these 10 keys are worth the whole price you paid for this audiobook. It's that they're that powerful. Number one, always make your invitations over the phone. The reason for this is simple. If you do them in person, that gives people the opportunity to start interrogating you. They often try to badger you into explaining the whole program right there. 
it's easier to extricate yourself from a phone call. Here's the other powerful reason for doing phone invitations. Hardly anyone makes phone calls anymore. They've moved to texting or using messenger apps. As a result, your candidates don't get many calls. So when they do get an actual, you know, 20th century style phone call, they'll assume it's something important. Number two, get off the phone within two minutes or less. Simply doing this will dramatically raise your compliance rates and the number of people who actually show up for a presentation. And the more people you get to your presentations, the more you'll bring into the business. It's that simple. If you're still on the line after the two-minute mark, you're begging, arguing, or answering too many questions. Number three, have your dream board in sight. You need to keep your passion and intensity high. And one of the great ways to do that is staying focused on why you're doing this to begin with. Your dream board is a great reminder. Number four, include your candidate's spouse or partner in the invitation. Frequently, you'll have someone attend a presentation and they're over the moon to sign up immediately. Then they go home to a skeptical spouse and drop out faster than they signed up. A couple that signs up together usually stays in the business because one can revitalize the other during times of weakness. Number five, repeat the details of the appointment at the end of the call. You're confirming that you both heard the same thing and anchoring the appointment in their mind. Number six, never call back to reconfirm. This is controversial with some people, but I'm just telling you what works. Never call back to reconfirm because doing so only invites postponements and cancellations. What I do find is that sending a Google Calendar invite or a a similar type of service can be effective. Number seven, schedule an exclusive block of time for making invitation calls. Block anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes just for making calls with no distractions. You'll build momentum and productivity, and you'll get enough positive responses to create traction for your events. Number eight, answer a question with another question. At the actual presentations, I always want you to answer every question directly. However, in the invitation process, remember, the candidate doesn't know what he doesn't know. You need to keep enough intrigue in play to ensure that if they're a viable candidate, they will get a chance to see the presentation. Why? So they have enough information to make the best decision for themselves. You can do this best by answering every question with another question. I'll give you some examples in a little bit. Number nine, customize your invitation to their wants. Anytime you have knowledge of what someone wants in their life, you have an opportunity to customize the invitation and increase its effectiveness. If you're close with someone, they might have mentioned something like wishing to pay down their credit card debt, finance their kids' foreign exchange trip, or build a swimming pool in their backyard. You have the chance to intrigue them with the possibility that what they are about to see might help them realize their aspiration. And finally, number 10, never end on a bad call. If you get a jerk or just someone who is cynical and negative, you can't stop there. Otherwise, you might fall into a procrastination path for the future. If you find yourself on a negative call, get off it quickly and punch the next number on your list immediately. If that call goes great, you might be more motivated to make another and another. Let the positive energy feed on itself. 
All right, let's look at some actual invitation templates. Allow me to share with you some of the most successful invitation templates I've used. If you're new or having trouble getting people to respond to your invitations, these will help you a great deal. The key here is using these templates as a guide to see what kind of approach works best for you. But keep this in mind, a relaxed, natural invitation, even if it isn't perfect, will always outperform a scripted invitation. Consider these suggestions. Find one that matches your vibe and then tweak it to your style and personality. I've broken them down into categories for different scenarios. And again, I say just this chapter is worth the whole price of the book because this is, it's not, I don't want to program you to be a robot. I don't want you reading boring scripts. I want you to look at these templates, internalize them, and then say them in a way that feels comfortable to you because these really work. All right, let's look at inviting to a live event. This first approach is one you can use to invite people to physical meetings, whether they are one-on-ones, home get-togethers, or hotel events. Remember, we're doing these on the phone, right? So you call up. The first thing to ask is, hey, you got a couple minutes? You need to make sure they're not in the middle of something urgent. If they are, let them know you'll call back and get off the phone. If they do have a couple minutes to ask, what are you doing Tuesday night? If they say they're out of town, working, or busy, get off the phone quickly without giving away why you called. They'll ask why, but just tell them that you wanted to do something with them and we'll try another time. Or if you're going for a one-on-one or have another possible meeting time, Then say, hey, what about Thursday then? Of course, most of the time when you ask this question, the answer is nothing or watching TV. Then you go with the actual invite. Remember some of the key tips I just gave you. Get off the phone in less than two minutes. Don't get dragged into an interrogation. Answer their questions with a question. So here's an example. Say something like, I'm hosting a presentation on creating residual income, and I'd like to invite you as my guest. Or, I'm going to a presentation on creating residual income, and I'd like to bring you as my guest. It's just human nature that they will ask you what the presentation is. You give them one answer free. Say something like, it's a presentation on building cash flow. Want to come? That leads you to the response part of the process. You're looking for people who are looking. So the invite is not about selling, begging, or convincing. Now you go into a three strikes and you're out mindset. Somebody who is definitely looking will say yes. If so, confirm the place and time and jump off the call. Make your next call while you're still feeling frisky. (laughs) However, most people will try and start the interrogation here. They usually say something like, But what is it? Is this ABC company? Is this one of those MLM things? What kind of business is it? What's the name of the company? That's strike one. And no matter what they say, you respond with a question. Whatever they say, right? Doesn't matter. Any one of those questions I just gave you, you respond. Have you read any of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad books? You'll understand perfectly when you see the presentation. Can you come? Or, yes, it is ABC Company. What do you know about it? Let them answer. The answer almost doesn't matter. And you say something like, great. A lot has changed about the company, and you should see it all. Can you make it? Or, no, it's not what you're calling MLM. This is an evolution of the business called leverage sales. What do you know about it? 
Again, let him answer. And again, the answer almost doesn't matter. And say, great, a lot has changed about it and you should see it all. Can you make it? If they say yes, confirm the place and time and bounce. Make your next call while you're hot. Some will still ask questions. That's strike two. And no matter what they say, you respond with a question. Have you read Randy Gage's book, Mad Genius? You'll understand it perfectly when you see the presentation. Can you come? If they say yes, confirm the place and time and get off the phone. Make the next call while you're hot. If they say no or ask more questions again, it's strike three. Say something like, doesn't sound like you're looking right now, so let's forget it. Let me know if you change your mind. Then get off the call and on to your next one. Don't beg, don't bargain, and don't diminish the opportunity. If they're not looking, you're not looking for them. For some people, this takeaway is what actually gets them to say yes. You want to be able to set aside enough time for invitations so you can get in at least 20 or 30 calls. This way, you're not emotionally invested in everyone saying yes. You're making enough invites to get some serious traction for your event. Maintain your passion, intensity, and urgency. Look for the people who respond to your excitement and get off the phone quickly with those who don't. All right, let's explore phone invitations to view an online presentation. Let's discuss how do you handle candidates when you're not inviting them to a physical presentation, but asking them to look over a tool or watch a streaming presentation. To have a successful major blast, you want to get at least 50 to 60 people from your list watching a presentation in your first 10 days, an average of five per day. Not everyone will review it immediately, of course, but you want to get at least 25 to 30 high-quality exposures from this, meaning people who will actually take the time to watch the presentation. This could be a video hosted somewhere or a link to your replicated website. You can also modify these slightly to invite people for live online presentations. This is my suggested go-to approach for people you can't get to a live presentation because either one, they live too far away, or two, you just don't have a strong enough influence with them. This also works great when you have a short preview or intrigue video to gauge candidates' interest. So, here's some examples. Hey, name, what are you doing right this second? I'm going to text you a link to a video. Will you take 20 minutes right now, watch it, and call me back as soon as you're done? Hey, name, as soon as we hang up, I'm going to text you a link to a video. Will you take three minutes to watch it and call me as soon as you're done? Hey, name, can you grab a pen, please? Write down this website. Give him the website. It's all about a new business I'm launching, and I'd love your take on it. Please take a look, and I'll call you back in 20 minutes to talk about it. Hi, name. I'm launching something hot, and you're one of the first people I thought of. I believe you could do well with this. Have you got a pen? Please go to, give them the website, and check this out. I'm trying to earn a new BMW, and I think you can too. Check it out, and I'll call you back at, whatever the time is, to talk to you about it. One more. Hi, name. I'm putting together a group of the brightest people I know to launch a new project. Your skill set seems perfect for it. If I text you a link, would you take 20 minutes and watch this online presentation for me? As always, create a sense of anticipation on their part and get off the phone quickly. Don't get drawn into a bunch of questions. All right, text email inviting to an online presentation. 
This approach is perfect for the people with whom you don't have a strong influence or haven't had contact in a while. Oftentimes, these are old schoolmates, former neighbors, or others who might be on your holiday card list. Or could be people you only have emails for. It can also be used for connections in online groups. It's a simple two-step qualifying process. The first message ascertains whether they have any interest, and the second one directs them to a website or online presentation. I did amazingly well with this process when I relaunched my business. It allowed me to spend time with the people who showed a genuine interest and not waste time with people who weren't good candidates. In the following examples, you'll notice that I was right up front that this was direct selling. If they had a problem with that, I didn't want to squander my time or theirs. You're Again, just like the earlier ones, you're welcome to use this example as is or work with your sponsorship line to create a template email that's specific to your company. Here's, and I'm going to read these to you. The first message, message one, in the subject line, I wrote residual income biz, B-I-Z. And then in the copy, hi, name. Are you interested in looking at a side business that can generate a very serious residual income? I'm launching something huge, and I'd love to have you on my team. I am working with an emerging direct selling company that meets the criteria to blow up in a big way. Things are starting to take off, and I'm looking for leaders in your area. We're seeking people with good teaching and training skills who want to capitalize on a chance to get in early. Here are the factors that make this such a powerful opportunity right now. Number one, you can be in from the beginning. The company has recently launched in you know, Germany, whatever your country is. So we have a real window of opportunity to get ahead in the race before most people even know there is one. We're looking for leaders we can train in our team system to own their local market and springboard from there. Number two, serious residual income available. I'm sure you're aware how important it is to have residual income to create true wealth. With this business, the compensation plan offers seven ways to earn with most of them residual. And again, this is what I use. If yours has three ways, 11 ways, 17 ways, customize it to your company. Number three, products people crave. There are many lifestyle factors and trends that make these products in serious demand. This ensures you have a stable business and income for many years to come. So, do you want to hear more about this? Or are you too busy with your other stuff to look? Please get back with me right away. Thanks, and then sign your name. And that worked for me, right? And there were people who just wrote back and said, "Eh, no, I'm too busy, but thanks anyway. Great. I sent them an email with my turn question, tried to get them as a customer. I didn't worry about if they weren't interested because I'm looking for people who are looking. You're looking for people who are looking. Uh, and since this is the audio book, let me just point out that the the three headings, number one, you can be in from the beginning, number two, serious residual income available, and number three, products people crave, those were done in bold type, and then the rest of the email was normal type. All right, here's message two. They responded. They showed some interest. Here's what you write back. Hi, name. Glad we had a chance to connect and that you're interested. I believe you can do great with this because of who you are. We have set up a very simple system that anyone can duplicate. Please go to, then put in your link there, and review the information. Then let's talk just as soon as you're done. We're moving fast right now, and I'd love to have you on my team. Thanks, and your name. A couple of things. 
You notice how I say, then let's talk as soon as you're done. We're moving fast right now. What am I doing with that copy? I'm showing passion, intensity, urgency, just like we do on the phone. All right, another note. Just like the phone invitations, if you customize each message with a few personal comments, your response rate will be higher. Also, these emails should just be sent only to people that you know. They won't work well with strangers, and you'd be leaving yourself open to spam regulations if you send them to rented lists. You'll also probably get thrown out of online groups if you just take this copy and bulk send it to everyone. Uh, When you send these, follow up within 24 hours for best results. If your candidate is interested but not ready to join, escalate the process. This can be done by doing a follow-up video, setting up a three-way call with your sponsor, or sending your candidate to an opportunity meeting in their area, or getting them on a Zoom or a Skype call. All right, let's look at inviting when you've got one shot. This is an approach for when you run into someone who impresses you, but you might never see them again. It could be a helpful retail clerk, a courteous Lyft or Uber driver, or an extra friendly flight attendant. Again, just listen to these ideas and look for one that feels right for you. Name. You're really impressive at what you do. You would be marvelous at my business. If I send a link to your phone, would you be willing to watch an 11-minute video? Next one. You know, you are way too good doing what you do to be doing what you do. I bet you would be amazing in my business. If I send you a link, would you be willing to review a short video and let me know what you think? Next one. Name. I'm very impressed at the job you do here. I believe you'd be very successful in the business I'm in. If I send you a link, would you be willing to review a short video and let me know what you think? Another one. You know, I'm very impressed at the job you do here. Are you familiar with direct selling? I'm in an emerging company, or I'm in a expanding company, or I'm in an established company that is looking for leaders. If I send you a link, would you be willing to review a short video and let me know what you think? So you see, again, that's the direct approach where we're telling them it's direct selling. Next one. I'm going to give you two more. Name. I'm a big believer in income diversification, and I've launched a new business to accomplish that. My guess is that you will be more than intrigued with the info on this flash drive. If I give it to you, would you be willing to review the video presentation it holds and let me know what you think? And the last one, name. I'm a big believer in income diversification, and I've launched a new business to accomplish that. My guess is that you'll be more than intrigued with the info in this magazine. If I give it to you, would you be willing to read it and let me know what you think? So, here's my best go-to strategy. Now, we've got to cue the music if we don't have the rights or I'd play it. (laughs) The Eminem uh, song from 8 Mile. But you only got one shot. Got to give me all you got. Remember that song? All right. So, I haven't used a business card in almost 15 years. But I created a sexy card to hand out in those situations where you just have one shot with somebody. I get mine from Moo Cards, which is just moo.com, M-O-O dot moo, like the cow, right? But you can have them made other places, I'm sure. With Moo, I get the luxe version, which is extra thick, super fine mohawk paper, with a colored seam and textured finish. I have a few lines of intriguing copy along with my name and contact info, but the real focus is the link to my replicated website featuring the recruiting video. 
So if I meet an Uber driver who really impresses me, I use one of the approaches that I just gave you and then simply hand them the card and, of course, leave a generous tip. If they're a serious candidate, they watch the presentation. And if they aren't really looking for something, they don't watch. And I never give it another thought unless I hear from them. Now, total disclosure. You might, you probably will get better results if you get their phone number and you follow up afterward. But that's just not my style. Remember, I'm this really uh, shy, um, um, not outgoing person. And so I'm just, I'm looking for people who are looking. So I qualify them with one of those uh, 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 messages I just shared with you and I give them the card. If there's, and I love Uber drivers and Lyft drivers, right? Because what does that tell you? This tells you this is an ambitious person. They probably have a day job and they're probably driving one of these uh, ride sharing uh, uh, app companies as a side hustle. Right. So they're the kind of people you're looking for. So I make one of the uh, 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 scripts that I just gave you, you know, the template, and I give them the card. They're serious. They watch the, the link on my replicated website and they call me. And if they don't, they don't. In all these cases, you'll have much more compliance with your people reviewing the materials and have a better response if you distribute them with a sense of urgency. Use an energetic and busy approach, but don't go overboard trying to pressure the candidate. Let them know that you're moving fast and ask for their commitment to review the materials quickly. If they really don't seem interested to look at the information, thank them for their time and move on. Especially for the people in your warm market, your best results will come when you qualify your candidate and organize a time to get back with them. Here's what that will look like. After your candidate agrees to review the information, say, Great! When do you think you can see it for sure? Wait for their response. Whatever time they give you is unimportant. Where they say, tonight, tomorrow, three hours from now, whatever, what, whatever it is, right? Then you say, so, if I call you right after the time they said they'd see it, you'll have seen it for sure, right? After they confirm this, ask for the best number to call them. And these days, basically, you just, you hand them your phone. Or if you got one of those, uh, I guess it's Samsung, where you could just share a, a the business card by tapping the phone or else you just, I give them my iPhone and ask them to enter because I don't, you know, I can't read without my glasses. I'll just give them my phone and ask them to enter their name and number in there. This way, the candidate has several opportunities to say they'll watch it. And by using this commitment approach, again, if you have the proper posture, you'll get a 70 or 80% compliance rate and better duplication throughout your organization. Without it, you'll have a much lower rate or worse duplication throughout your organization. When you follow up as you agreed you would, you simply say, hey, did you have a chance to review the information? If they tell you they have not reviewed the presentation yet, say something like, it's really important. When do you think you could see it for sure? And again, Wait for their answer and get that answer and then say, great. So if I call you on whatever this new time is, you'll have seen it for sure. Just keep repeating this process until they actually review the presentation or tell you they're not interested. A few key thoughts I want us to revisit. Some of your best leaders will likely come from people you don't know yet. So as you go through your day, be on the lookout for sharp people. People who are successful in other areas usually are successful in direct selling too. Keep honing your skills on meeting people. Sometimes you get only that one shot. So always have some of your prospecting tools in your car, purse, or briefcase for when you meet a great candidate. And finally, 
inviting is the money skill. Like I said earlier, it's the most lucrative skill you can develop. Use these templates, test them, and modify these approaches to fit your natural personality. It's a good idea to even role play with somebody in your sponsorship line. They'll have insights on how you can customize them to make your opportunity even more effective. The better you get at inviting, the more qualified candidates you'll have attending your live presentations. And the more qualified candidates you get in front of a presentation, the more new enrollments you will have, which is exactly what we'll work on next.